Now let's look at key performance measures, uh, particularly for stock. So first we have book value, and that's the amount of stockholders equity that's in a firm. So we would just get that off of the firm's balance sheet. And so the book value is good when it's steadily increasing, and you absolutely want market value to exceed book value because that difference is the amount of, of value that management has added to the firm and added to those assets that the firm has acquired. So book value is total assets minus liabilities and preferred stock. Another key measure is net profit margin. So this is most widely used. So when we think about a firm and, and its performance, we, we oftentimes think about profits. And so what it's doing is it's relating profit margin is relating that bottom line profit, revenues minus expenses, to their actual revenues or sales. So the more the company earns, that means the higher the net profit is going to be if you keep their expenses the same. So a stable or even better increasing net profit um, or net profit margins are really good sign that things are, are moving in the right direction. Another key performance measure is return on equity. So return on equity shows how much money the firm is making with the capital that's been invested by stockholders. So it's a ratio of net income to common equity, so net income divided by common equity, and it reflects the, the company's management of their assets, their operations, and how they're handling their capital with respect to debt and equity. So the better the ROE, the better financial condition of the firm and their competitive position. So ROE is going to be a measure that stockholders are really going to be concerned about. Next we have earnings per share, sometimes we just abbreviate it EPS. And that's the amount of net income earned by one share of common stock. So it allows us to take this really big number and put it in perspective. So it's going to be net profit minus dividends divided by the total number of shares outstanding. So our P, some, a few others, um, PE ratio, pr price to earnings ratio, is another metric that investors are going to be interested in because it tells you how much confidence investors have in that firm. The reason why is because it's telling you how much investors are willing to pay per dollar of earnings. So if that number is very high, that, that total P.E. ratio, then that means that investors have a lot of confidence in this company. They're willing to pay a lot for a certain amount of earnings. But if the P.E. ratio is low, then it's just the opposite. Investors aren't very confident. They aren't willing to pay very much for a certain level of earnings. Beta. Beta measures risk or volatility. So, so in technical mathematical terms, it's telling you how the returns of this stock move in relation to the returns of the market. So a stock with a beta of one moves pretty much in line with the market. So if the market is up, this stock is up by just as much. And the reverse would also be true in downtimes. But if a beta, if a stock has a beta of less than one, then that stock is less volatile in the market. So if the market really surges, this company's returns or prices, stock price, is not going to surge as much. And the good side is that means the reverse is still true. If you've got a beta that is, um, or just sticking with the beta that's less than one, if the market falls, this stock is not going to fall quite as much. And then going the opposite direction with beta, if you've got a beta that's greater than one, then this company is going to be more volatile than in the market. And again, volatility is really measuring risk. So beta is measuring risk, and risk is really uncertainty. Let's talk about types of common stock. We have something that are called blue chip stocks. Those are, those are the large, well-established companies. So oftentimes when we look at the Dow stocks, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that's a measure of these large, older, uh, well-established blue chip firms. They typically pay a dividend, which means they're, again, fairly stable. And um, their returns are considered to be uh, more dependable. They're less risky firms. 
some other types of stock or different ways that we classify stock. So we talked about blue chips, but then there could be growth stocks. These typically are younger stocks where they're growing more aggressively. They, um, they're uh, maybe in a, in a market that is experiencing quite a lot of growth. Um, they're a very young company and maybe they're reinvesting a lot into the company or research and development that's enabling to them to grow. Um, they typically don't pay out dividends or very low dividends while they're in this growth stage. And even though they're growing, they, their price could be fairly volatile, so it could um, fluctuate quite a bit. Another type of stock would be a tech stock. Remember we mentioned earlier that the NASDAQ usually houses most of the tech stocks. So these are often growth stocks as well. Sometimes they're speculative stocks because there's so much volatility. And some of them could even be blue chip stocks, like an IBM for example. Now there are also stocks that we consider income stocks where they pay fairly high dividends, so that would give you, remember, current income. And so we buy those stocks because we like that high dividend or high dividend yield and we're, we're looking for some income stream. So typically older people um, who are living on a fixed income like an investment like this because it adds to that fixed income. A speculative stock would be a very risky company. Um, maybe it's brand new, maybe it's in a, in a market that we're not so sure is going to hang around, but for whatever reason, it's not as dependable, it's not as old, it's not as stable, very risky. Cyclical. Cyclical stocks are stocks where they're um, their stock prices move with the business cycle. So the business cycle has these peaks and valleys, and so cyclical stock prices move along with those same peaks and valleys. These are typically restricted to certain industries where those industries have similar peaks and valleys. Now a defensive stock, and we're getting into some pretty technical terms, but it's this defensive stock um, is kind of the opposite. It's stable in downturns. Um, so these are ones where, you know, it just doesn't matter what's going on in the economy, people need these goods. So this is going to be um, groceries, uh, medicine, you know, those basic needs that consumers have where they're always going to buy it no matter what's going on in the economy. Now we can also measure stocks by size, and by, by size I mean market capitalization. Market capitalization is the stock price multiplied by the number of shares outstanding. So a small cap stock would be a small firm where if you take the current stock price times the number of shares outstanding, that result is going to be under two billion. Two billion to ten billion will be considered a mid cap, and then over ten billion is a large cap. So those again are just ways of measuring size. Smaller firms tend to be more risky, larger firms tend to be older and more stable.